In this video, we're diving into the design and mechanics from a robot fresh from the World Championships from the 2024 FTC season, Team 4348. You'll learn their approach for tackling this season's Into the Deep Challenge, from how they intake and outtake the game pieces to achieving an impressive level three hang. I'm Coach Pratt, and with over 10 years of robotics education experience and a track record of coaching champion teams, I'm confident that from analyzing this robust techniques for this game, that you'll be able to take some of those mechanisms insights and be able to fuel some of your future robotics with fresh ideas. We'll start with an overview of this year's game, and then we'll get an interview with the team and their robot explaining how their mechanisms work. So let's go get started. Here's a quick breakdown of the 2024 Into the Deep season for the FTC Robotics. The game is played on a three meter by three meter field with four robots and two different alliances. Each alliance has two robotics each on respectively red and blue colored. Robots were required to grab rectangular prisms from either around the game field or inside the center submersible, and then bring these plastic game pieces back to the baskets in their corners for to score eight points. Alternatively, they could take these same plastic pieces, bring them over to the human player who had a clip on top, and then they can now place these new pieces with hooks on them on the center bars for 10 points. In the last stages of the game, robots got to hang from that bottom rung for 15 points, or they could grab that bottom rung, pick themselves up, then grab the top rung and fully suspend them on top of that second rung in order to give themselves 30 points. Now, there are a lot more complexities in this game than this, but that should give you a pretty rough idea. Now, let's go take a look at how this robot managed these challenges. L3, which is like the main part. Mm -hmm. We go out with these. This is running 130. Yep. Uh, I forget the exact ratio. It, yep. It's not that big, so it's, it's very close to 30 RP. Okay. okay, so it's just one yeah. and, motor here that okay. runs. It is. Bevel gears okay, going yeah. to this. Yep. With that's just running both at the same time. Yep. Okay. And we grab on, pull back just a bit, so we are, uh -huh. you know, tilting on that bottom bar. Just pull up a slight bit, and then this will go. Uh -huh. out. This starting here. This yep. goes out. It, it pops. It looks onto the bottom top bar here. Yep. And uh, starts bringing it down and swinging at the same time. Yep. These would be. But these go all the way out so that the bar, the level two bar slides all the way down. Yep. That's also what these will go or something with. Okay. Yeah, she got little bumpers on the front yeah. plate then. These are mostly for, you don't want samples getting stuck in the middle. Yes. Like, some wacky stuff. And, yep. Uh, covering blue wheels during that. Mm -hmm. So we bring it all the way in like this. And yep. down like this so it comes to rest over here. Then we just bring down this. Curve. Mm, okay. Ah, and that's how you kind of suck yourself in. I love this little hard stop that you guys yeah, have that, designed on that. That's really slick to stop it from crunching back in and also keeping your... Yeah. Worked very well. Yeah, that's a great, great little hard mechanism to be able to keep it together. But and also putting nice. an angle on that too yeah. makes it nice. Yeah. Everything's kind of like really beefed up. <laughs> yeah, especially the this arm. At some point we were using double gears, yep. uh, just directly here that... Was not fun. It, yeah. Uh, uh. Double gears got kind of torn up. Same with the motors. So we used miter gears. We tried to switch miter gears because oh, okay. the double well, the gears do have a bit of slack in them. Yes. So we switched miter gears. Yep. And those actually snapped. So now these are 260s running at about 80% power. These are very low RPM, high torque. Same yep. with this because uh -huh. uh -huh. we hang off of it. Yes. Actually, same with this too. If you're moving, how quickly can you rotate here to be able to grab from your intake to be able to place in a bucket if you're it running on 60s? Around a half second, because okay, we, we are using two, so it is a lot faster. Yep. But then just using one. Um, yep. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. It's, so so as far right now is this extension because this is a okay. two twenty three. Okay. Yep. So it, it is, it. and you're running off of bevel gears there, but yeah, then these bevel, bevel gears, gears drive into, this little sprocket. This, yeah, this chain. Okay. Oh, yeah, and these are just some idlers to be able to keep your tension. Yeah, just idlers to keep tension, also so yep. it can retention. Yep. Uh -huh. All our chains have that because tensioning exactly is it's a, a challenge on a chain. It, it is a challenge. Yep, it's a challenge. Chains can be hard to work out, but, yes. but they are strong. Yes. Because the Go Builder chains. system is designed for 48 mil center yeah. to center. We have single stage size because we want it to be like uh -huh. more reliable and sturdy. Yeah. Tell me about your intake. What do you got going on so there? We're using 
differential wrist right here. Yep. Uh, just to a kind of like pretty pretty active. I, I would, I'd say it's inactive. Uh, so you got little compliant wheels here. Yeah, a little. Is it a separate <laughs> servo driving uh, each? No, it's just this one servo. Yep. Uh, it's kind of hard and to see got... it there, but. Okay, they, yeah. There's two, two belts. Uh, yeah. Two yeah. belts driving here with just these yeah, two gears. You got a belt on this side, belt on that side, and it's driving yeah. and the opposite. Can I yeah. see the belts in there? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. This is just differential using Go Go to Yeah, 100%. Gears, uh -huh. they, they work fine. Yep. So yeah, you can see you're it. getting a bit. Yeah. Oh, it not too bad. It's got a bit a of bit backlash, of, but it's not terrible. Play, but yeah. it, it works. For what the mechanism needs to do, it works. Yeah. You don't really need that much. Okay. It has. Pretty good tolerances, just yep. so it, yep. it does stay in there well. And we are able to uh, do specimens with this. So those little forty-eight millimeter. Oh, I like this. What's your little divot here? Oh, yeah, that is so because uh, sometimes it is a bit wacky, but yep, this it, it does help uh, a lot with keeping samples in here. So <laughs> ah, so it stops it from falling. Yeah, out. they yep. it, it is pretty stuck in there. It. it it's not entirely new, but it, it does yep. help, like, yep. for, like, if we grab it a bit weird, like, over here. Then it helps. It, it does help, like. Does it help stop the, the piece from torquing in yes, place? Yes, it does, it does help a lot it with that. It almost helps self-center it. Because specimens, they do need to be yep. perfectly straight. We can't have any tweaking, so. Yes, yep. That, that centers them. And yep. we have the little color sensor in there. Yep. Just so. Yep. For detection of that. Is the distance color from Rev, or is it just color? Uh, distance color. Okay. It is the uh, V3. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Have you found that be pretty reliable as a way of sensor itself is reliable. Yeah. Yep. The wiring can be a bit tricky here, but okay. it, it seems to work a lot. Yeah, because you're running ITC right beside a power line, so yeah, you're going to be it's... causing some issues on your sensor. Yeah, through that, especially because you have bottled, and it's right beside a motor. Yeah. Yeah. So you got a lot of interference on there, right? Yeah. So far, it's it's been pretty reliable, though. Yeah, it's been Good. pretty reliable. Good. I'm glad to hear that. What is this little servo here doing? Oh, that, so... Looks like it's some sort of sweep arm yeah. in the back? because when we are uh, trying to grab from the submersible, uh, yeah. if, oh, like, Sorry. imagine this is the submersible wall. Yep. If a block is right here, we cannot grab it. We will slide onto the yep. wall. So this is just there to go out. And sweep <laughs> sweep it a little sweep further out. out. Yeah. So, so we, it's not something you use it. very frequently, but if no. you're like, oh, crap, I really need to push this thing out of the way. If now, we're really... And that's because you're saying that this linear slide is quite slow. It, so it's a bit slower. It's not. It's not definitely not fastest. Yeah. Though it it does work pretty well. Yep. And we will. We basically keep it out, especially for samples. We oh, will keep it out. You, yeah, you keep it out for most of the match. Yeah. And we just. Ah. Pivot. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. I was wondering if so, you. So you found that the pivot is fast enough to move this. Yeah. That's why you have such Our, high torque yeah, because it keeps it out yeah, the whole time. <laughs>